local recording. I've got our garbage teams, don't worry about it. Lauren's in his house. The toga nearly fucking murdered a lady. And Shin, still mad. That's it, let's go. So here's Phil um, doing the Diana counter and they're rushing ahead to Gibraltar without uh, waiting for our help. Um, Woo though, not so pleased with this. She thinks, yeah, she's like, Phil, Captain Phil, high energy reading. He's like, what the fuck, just get out the way. He's a cannon, like the one on the uh, Minerva. Yeah, I'm, I'm playing it on the, the Game Boy Advance, and the only Final Fantasy Tactics game on that is Tactics Advance, and that's a fucking bad game. Okay, so Phil, so Phil knew about the cannon, but he wasn't prepared for how strong it is, and it's blown away his guard and they're forced to leave. Howdy, Pet Clay, Benny, how you doing? Welcome to goddamn anime. Uh, oh, okay, so it's not even the the Tannhaus, that's the Lohengrin. I guess uh, the Tannhaus is exclusive to the Minerva. But they're both like, it's because they're fucking gates. Alright, it's because they're stupid gates. So here's uh, a Heiner. Uh, Heiner isn't in this game voiced because his voice actor is actually a real celebrity man. He's released lots of music and is expensive, which was why he was in the TV show. But at Ghana, he's like, Loan Gran, why is it called that? And it's um it's a model of Proton Cannon and they put a big one in the valley that we need to get through to get to Gibraltar and anytime anyone gets uh, near it, they fire it. Shoot first, ask questions later, and that's why it's got the nickname of the Loan Gran the Loan Gran Gate. I guess it's like Grin Gate, but it doesn't fucking matter. Uh, Gwen uh, thinks that Phil jumped the gun and charged into the gate out of arrogance. Because uh, he thinks so little of people from Earth. And he wanted to impress us by beating, uh, like, blasting through the enemy's firepower and going, ha, check that, Earthlings. And it might have worked before the world breaking thing happened, but not so much now, because. The Diana counter are no longer top dog. But at least we know they're human. Because they're fallible. The air is human and they add. But how are we going to get through the goddamn gate? Um, the Diana counter have sent us a mysterious, beautiful man with a lovely voice, Harry Ord. And he's the captain of uh, Diana's personal guard. Uh, Gwyn's glad to hear the name, because he's like, yeah, that dude's hella good. Good fashion sense. Um, but how are we going to get through? And it's not as easy as just sending the super robots and then the mobile suits after. So, the captains think about it like, mm, yes. Mm, mm. And then uh, Ume comes in and says, I think I know someone who can get us through the gate. And she brings in... Yasaba. It's Yasaba Jin. And uh, he's from King Gain and he's the dude who runs away and then gets the blind fortune telling gun and they just run away and live in the mountains or whatever. He's like, fuck being evil, I'm done. Um, but he claims to be a big name in Siberia and uh, Gengoro says that he's a Siberian Railways officer and he's like, no, it's all behind me now. Uh, and so, and we're like, alright, fine. He's like, do you want me to tell you how to get past the gate, right? Meanwhile, Soshi and uh, Miche have met a young girl named Aifa, which is the one on the right, and she went on an ex ex exodus to Indus, which is uh, India in King Ganon. But it's in Iman territory now, and the girl's like, wow, 
pulled off an exodus. It took a lot for Japan Zealand to make their one. But uh, Aifa says she owes it all to um, the uncle she's with. He's strong and kind and grand. And I'm going to look up a voice actress because I believe this is a voice actress joke. Well, not a joke, but reference. Let's go get it, King Gainer. I want the full characters and voice actors, thank you very much. That's Yasaba, I don't want Yasaba. Oh good, they, they don't have it. But I think, like, I want to say she's voiced by Kess. But Amro's uh, drawn to the girl because she reminds, uh, yeah, because she reminds him of someone. But uh, all he'll say, and they're like, uh, who? And he's like, all I'll say is she's important enough to uh, leave uh, lasting wounds in me and another man. Yes, yeah, so it's uh, she's voiced by Lala. I believe. But anyway, the Federation set up camp in this area three months ago and uh, built with that weaponry and everyone who was living there has had to piss off and that's why the old man's helping and uh, she wishes she could do more than that but she's also a little girl I don't know if she's actually blind though, maybe I made that up and then a mysterious lady comes in and boss is like oh my my you got a hot Tamale mother, and she's like, I'm not her mother. I'm just here. I, I arrived recently, and uh, her name is uh, Teteth Halle. And uh, every dude in Zuth who's here is like, Oh my god, you're so good. Just can can we help you with anything? Is there anything we can do? And Tosi and me say like, What? Wait a minute, why are all the men doing this? Wait a minute, why are we the only men here? Where are all the other girls? And it turns out all the other girls are down at the um, riverside washing everybody's clothes because all the washing machines are broken. And they're broken so badly that Vino and Aston Age on uh, repair duty is going to take a while. And, uh... guy, but so she and Misha are the only ones who uh, feel it's inappropriate to demand that um, women do the cleaning. They're active pilots, like why why the fuck are they being forced to do it? And uh, Gavan um, then says, a very progressive Lady Soshi, you'll make a good new century wife. So, uh, <laughs> so I, I'm not sure if Gavan gets any points there. Well, uh, Tomino and Misha and Soche do. <laughs> but nobody else fucking does, and maybe Gavan doesn't either. <laughs> that fucking dude, but look who it is. It's Harry. We don't know it's Harry yet, but that's fucking Harry. He's so good! He's so good! I fucking love that dude, look at him. That reminds me of Paul Short's racist, sexist Shire horse. And it's like, oh yeah, all the super robot dudes are sexist, because they're from the 70s. Don't worry about it. But here, this beautiful man's coming through the... No, he's also put, he's also put on a jumper and a pink shirt. <laughs> but this guy comes in and is like, I'm looking for Lauren Seahack. And boss is like, go to the river. He's like, alright. And he goes, is Lauren doing washing as well? Everyone does get a good, uh, everyone in turn A does get good, good points. 
Except Gavan, maybe. And Goji's like, what's up with that guy? And uh, Aoife doesn't recognise him either. And so she's like, I think I should recognise him? And Amara goes, that dude is thinking, that dude's not a civilian. Definitely not. And Tetet is uh, plotting. She's like, um, he's looking for Lauren Seahack. Well, wherever that moon race fucker is, the one who fights with the Earthmen, then my target should be with him too. And it's Harry, and Harry's just walking along, giggling to it, like he's going, <laughs> my disguise is so good! But uh, he's thinking, um, whoever the Queen Diana on the Soleil is, that she's clearly not the woman he knows, so Harry's figured out that there was a switch somewhere. And uh, he's like, yep, she figured with uh, Kielheim, and he's here to find out the truth, but he never expected to see. But And what he didn't expect to see is, in fact, is all the women washing our Setsuko's own fucking problems. <laughs> Setsuko just can't fucking clean a cloak. And here's uh, Kiel, who's actually Diana, so Queen of the Moon has decided to join in on the washing. And that Harry can't believe this shit. Like, straight up, Harry's like, what the fuck? The queen? My beautiful queen? Washing clothes? What the? But I mean, I'd be surprised too. Screenshotting Diana in her outfit, it's good. Ba -da 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 -da. But, um, yeah, so the Queen wanted to help, I guess. But, uh, Kiel needs Cape's help, and uh, Cape's joining in. Yeah, so Lauren and. Yeah, so, uh. Oh! 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 The reason Setsuko is making that face is because she hates washing and she wants to do the she wants to beat the laundry, which is what Lauren, Cape, and Diana are doing. And Diana needs Cape's help, and he's like, "Hell yeah, I'm ten and real strong. I'll beat the shit out of any sheets." And uh, he gives us some words of comfort that his dad likes to say: "Just do as much as you can." Um. Uh, Luna and uh, Merinia from Gravian are getting a lesson uh, that's going to help, yeah. And they're like, wow, that's a, that's a lesson that's uh, got, yeah, so this is what's got, yeah, so. Luna's like, on the left, is like, so this is what's going on when we're, like, when do you guys normally do this? And then Merinia on the right is like, this is what we do when you're off fighting. We're waging the war at home. Huh? Fucking maids. I hate them. I hate them. Howdy, Ryan and Connor. How you doing? And there's them. They're the three maids that look like they're about seven, and they're the ones that are in charge of getting AG naked and washing him all the time, and he hates it. But anyway, everyone's expecting Setsuko to feel uh, like she's wasting her time. Because she's been so all about simulator and helping her fight, but she's like, no, actually, this feels like I'm getting to actually like live a regular, normal life instead of being a soldier. So it ain't so bad, and uh, it's sharpening her drive to fight and protect this sort of thing. <laughs> well, just go away. And um. Kiel internally, who's Diana, uh, is like, you know what? I'm with Setsuko. I feel like I feel like a person just carrying out my own life instead of being uh, the queen of the moon. But uh, 
um, they're going to get Tetsuya to use the Great Typhoon to help uh, dry the stuff. He didn't like it, but he'll do it. So they basically got Mazinga to do his big burp on the clothes to clean it, to make it all dry. Brilliant, great. Then Gingora shows up and gives the same just do as much as you can speech, and he says he's a traditional kind of guy. Uh, in his world in it and his time, it was the men's job to go out fishing and the women's to keep the home. Or he says, or to look at it another way, it's the women that make it possible for the men to fight. And Kyo then says, uh, th is that the way it has to be, though? Um, because, um, and she mentions our men are very important in times of war, and Gengoro, uh says that he hopes uh, that war is a passing thing, and when it's over and the ships come home, uh, the world comes back to the women. Um, not war, but home and hearth. No, Great Mazingas is just warm, I think, instead of rusty. So they're alright. But anyway, this is getting weird, and we're getting mixed messages from two Tomino shows. One from the 70s, where he's like, fuck children, and also women stay at home. And one that he did in, like, 1998, where he's like, actually, we, we, men and women are good. But Harry is had enough of this. And he's like, but Diana, why are you washing clothes? And Lauren's like, Jesus fucking Christ, dude. She's meant to be undercover and you're going around yelling because you can't keep your fucking cool? Dude. Lauren Seahack, Harry. So they recognize each other and they have an awkward little bit where they're like, but you... And then Harry just says, uh, like, they have a little awkward thing. And then Harry just goes, I'll come out and say, is your employer, Kiel Heim, in truth, my liege, Diana SLA? But before he has a chance to go, yeah, of course she's a fucking idiot. Um, Horace arrives, and uh, he's to be the strategic consultant for the fight coming up. And with the locals' cooperation, he thinks he's got the operation all sketched out. But he'd like some quality time with Lauren's white doll before the fight. <laughs> yeah, Gara hopes that in the end, after the war, women can focus on the important things, which is staying at home, being oppressed, rather than being important, having an agency own for their own lives. Well, I mean, Gengoro said it. He wants to kiss a woman. That's why he lives out on a fucking boat. That's you know what? That's why Gengoro fucking like Gengoro just spend ninety percent of his time on a fishing boat out at sea because his wife just fucking kicked him out. But anyway, chapter 27, Widening Rifts. So let's launch all our nerds. Let's organize our nerds so we got the good people. Yeah, I mean, supers up front, nerds at the back, sure. Gengoro was a better dad, maybe Cafe wouldn't try and kill people with anchors. <laughs> so Harry's deployed with the rest of us. You know, is it golden sumo? Yeah, so Amara's like, well, wow, that's uh, Harry's thing, huh? Golden sumo. And Quattro says that it takes a certain amount of confidence to pilot um, the Gordy machines, so that the man must have serious skill as a pilot. And it's like, Quattro, you're right, Gavanguni is incredibly confident. And he's fucking swinging the anchor around his head on a chain and just trying to murder the other kid, and he's like, this is our gang war, fucker. But um, Horace is uh, apparently. Here you go. Uh, Horace has apparently cleaned the nanoskin shreds out of the thruster veins in the Ternay's legs, so now it can fly. And uh, he and Aston Age also stocked his chest up with weapons. So Lauren's like, has it like reached its original power? And um, 
but it's definitely more hidden in the robot, like all the data on the angels. So Harry's gonna make a squad with Lauren. Look at him. Changes his outfit. He's ready for war. He's got his glasses on. Can't see shit actually. He's actually like super blind. Uh, but Harry still expects an answer to his question, but he can wait until after the battle. Until then, he can't have Lauren dying on him. So he's helping. So, here's the plan. There's a there's a natural tunnel that goes along the valley wall, and we need someone to go through it while we draw the cannon's fire, and then disable the cannon. But the only thing we've got that can fit is Shin's uh, core splendor, and probably the UFO, the TFO. But no, Athrun makes sure that Shin understands the plan, because uh, as uh, the captain, he wouldn't uh, he wouldn't have assigned Shin to the mission if he didn't believe in him. And uh, Yasaba tells Shin not to screw it up, and Shin yells at him. And uh, everyone's like, is he going to be alright? And AG says, like, I can take the G attacker in. And Toga's like, nope. I need you for the for the Grand Kaiser for the combination. But Lohengrin's charging, so get going, Shin. And then here's Camille's like, Shin, just focus on what you have to do. And I'll try to forget about four. And now Rikoa to Kotro. Don't you have anything to say to Camille? There's nothing I can say. This is Camille's problem to deal with. It's pretty mean. It's not my job to be nice, but that still hurts coming from you. Well, I'm glad you think it's a good time to crack jokes. And then Emma. What's going on between Lieutenant Rikoa and... Lieutenant Kotro? Well, second Lieutenant Rikoa and Lieutenant Kotro. What's the... But the enemy are deploying in their defensive formation. And there's the Lohengrin. And they were like, wow, that's a pretty weird gun now we're looking at it. And Cat's just like, is this, is everything going to be alright? Is, is everything going to be alright though? What about everything being alright? Are we gonna die? Um, but Ray is perfect that Shin will uh, do his job. Uh, the Lone Grid apparently takes a minute to charge up according to Horace's intel, so all we need to do is draw the enemy's attention. So, apparently this is a tough one. Yeah, look at him. Awful, I hate him. And the Battle Masters do the finish the thing in um, four turns. Let's have a look at Harry. He's good. Blocking, count level 5, sport attack level 3, and predict. He gets the, the go fast like Shah does, and being squad leader is plus 1 movement and plus 10% evasion. Sure, boss. Sure. You, uh... You give it your best. Bam, 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 bam. Bam, bam. Bam, 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 bam. Bam, 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 bam. Yeah, the drone can now fly. A man came in and pulled all the gunk out. I don't know, I don't know if got still rocket punching I don't know nothing. Bonk. 
So you can see the DJ is like a command version of the the Baldi. We just got to kill everybody. Yeah, the, the the Mazinga, like all of the the soup, well, especially Maz the Mazingas. Basically, anything that's dynamic pro, except Ryoma, because Ryoma's not tough. Uh, are only going. All right, calm down, guy. Are gonna um only take ten from every grunt. He also has the um, the beam thingy unit, uh, beam drive unit, which is supposed to be all attack, and his beam saber is now one to do. So now it's less important that you hang out with people who can shoot at range one, but it's still useful. I guess our point is just do this in four turns. Delayed. Now just make us go fast. Yeah, it's the, it's the the chest spray that he uses literally once in the entire series, but they put in every single fucking one, every single game. And so, four random units are going to get shot and have their hit points in half. And Logan can fight, and it's like, wow, that's uh, fucking dangerous. Yeah, well, we got to do it. Fires once every minute. So, sort out your damage. So next time we gotta do another gun. Yeah, that's just that dude with half his health halved. I don't know if it always does half your maximum, or if it's half your current, like other things. But 
I think all of the Turn A Gundam's weapons are war crime ones, except for the hammer. Awesome. Yeah, I don't know if it's current or total. I have to have someone not be full and then get shot. Yeah, they're in try instead of wide, so get them, buddy. The moonlight, the moonlight butterfly is a fucking war crime. But I think the people that made it knew that it was. The moonlight butterfly is a spray of um, nano machines that do, like, completely annihilate any non-organic matter. And it's capable of doing it from um, the sun to Jupiter, I think. At full power. And that's really fucked up. When you consider that the people who came up with it live in tin cans in space. Like, they were like, fuck it. Like, we'll, we'll make a weapon where we'll all die and all human civilization will be set back millions. Uh, we don't give a shit. Who cares? Let's go. But the turn is magic anyway. Like, the turn is actually outrageous. Can that fit its um, chest with different units, including the ability to launch nuclear missiles? Yeah, exactly. The pe everybody just suffocates in space. Even the people who made it are like, if you have to, kill everybody. Anybody who doesn't live on Earth will die. But yeah, the, the, like the turn A at maximum output should have infinite ammo and everything because it just teleports new things to it. Like, it could have um, a chest system that launched ICBMs and it just teleports new ones in from the storage facility. Same with just everything it does. It's just like, now nah, more, here we go. Oh, I need, I need a different gun. Holds out its hand, new one appears. It's total bullshit. Yeah, and the Tone X is also fucked up and bad. They're both extremely rude. It's that Prevail level 8 kicking in, but also that was the... Oh no, that was the main dude who just sucked. That's fine too, I guess. Time for... Tetsuya to use all of his energy. Imagine the power. No, it's okay. No, it's regular. Regular Koji's using up all his juice. That's fine. Right then. So now I gotta heal up. So it hit him and two battleships and Setsuka. All right, all right. All right, all right. Um, I mean, I don't really want to have to do a heal. But I guess I'm gonna have to.
<laughs> they should add Hideaki Anno from Blue Bases. They should add Ultraman. Ultraman, um, the dude who's the final boss of Second OG, he wanted to be an Ultraman, so I think he might be Hideaki Anno. The Vagola is a little bit faster, a little bit stronger. As I improve, the Vagola, the Vagola responds. Like I could put her in the thing, but it's too late to get the region from that, I believe. No, I don't need that. One day I'll be able to click on the guy. <laughs> Fucking awful. Oh. Yeah, let's get stuck in. Shit that Jin's robot doesn't have the cowboy hat on. It's okay. Sayaka will have the cowboy hat next game, but it's a different Sayaka, so. Focus on him every time because he has regen. Beam drive unit. Ain't gonna do much damage to him, but that's fine. Let's find the, the white doll comment. Just up here. Uh, I should be happy that the Moon Race and Plant are entering an alliance. But it means the Moon Race will have to make a more active stance in the war. Maybe the White Doll and I are facing the same question. You know what, Owen? You're alright. But yeah, I've been playing text so like the the thing where you have to like do stuff to unlock the different careers is it interesting. In theory, but then in practice, it just means that you spend your first two hours playing the game going into training mode with your starting dudes and you all fight naked. You start punching each other in the back of the head. They all have that perception, but it uh, ain't looking so good for the day. Ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. Yeah, he, yeah, he's got the, the thing too. These fucking jokesters. Saka, so, you're better than that. Boss, you're not, but it's fine. Yeah, four and Stella ran away. Four nearly died to Toga going and the retreating enemy. Better smash! No, oh, no, you can't see shit! Which is bullshit because Boss can see shit because he can look out through the teeth holes. Because that's just open and he sticks his head out of there all the time when he's piloting. He's just being a goof. Oh, 
for that dude. No respect for the Art of War. That dude's definitely dead because he's gonna support himself. Ba 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 I want an app attack, I should probably not put Camille in fucking the way. Ba da ba. I was fucking dead anyway. Wee 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 wee. Yeah, the ding 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 ding. It's because he's garbage and drop in and stuff. Here. Just focus on what I'm fighting. If I die, I'll never get to see four again. Oh, Camille, he's been bitten by the bug. He saw a lady. He saw a lady in a very 80s shirt. And now he's, uh... That's it. He's done. To be fair, Thor was nice to him. I think we get the Zeta in nine stages? Seven, maybe? It's just after the root split. One more juice, but I can't get him one more juice. This is bullshit. Kotaro, take it away. Beam Naginata. Is Camille another Renton? No. Camille's not particularly thirsty like Renton. At least Camille's got the excuse of he's a new type. He's got a thing in his brain which will make him act that way. Whereas Renton's just like, damn, I want to kiss a girl and touch her boob. Come to the base Jabber. Why not just stay on it, Quattro? Why not just stay on the Jabber? And just fly instead of running around like an idiot. And he's dead. He died. She went that oh crap we haven't ejecting <laughs> Yeah the DJ is good. That's how we got it. Cause it's good and cool. Shit. And these guys can't even kill nobody. Right. Here's Hamuro. Slowly waddle around. Go, go, go. 
the, the new is further off than the Zeta because I think when Camille gets the Zeta, that's when Amuro upgrades to the Ruggers. <laughs> He's like, no, oh, sorry, dude. <laughs> you upgraded to the shitty mess produce. Well, he attempted a mess produce Zeta that didn't fucking work. Let's find it. Let's look up the toy moin. Uh, yeah, stage 33. We get the we get far. We get the Zeta. Amuro gets the Ridges, and we can buy an Ashima. When do we actually get the new? Uh, stage 43, we get the new. It's, it's fucked. Can't believe we crashed the maid into the robot. Toga, you're a monster. We covered this last stage. Stay a little bit away from this surfing dude, though. Bow wow, wow. Bow wow. Who's going to the two Mark Twos? I don't know, I don't know. Emma, maybe? Emma in the regular, Gavan in the black, maybe? Yeah, it'll be interesting to see the new. So you can go, this was the new in 2007. Or whenever Z1 came out. And then we'll go to the next one and go, and this is what they did with it later. And go, yeah, they spent all the fucking money on that. And in um, 2 part 1, the... The ha what becomes the Harute is fucking garbage, like really bad, boring animations. So then the guy who does the new was like, I'm fucking doing that shit. Okay, so... Okay, so Setsuko and Co. should be on a quarter health. Exactly, Sushuaku, so got goddamn Tomahawks. The quintessential super robot weapon. Well, I guess the rocket punches, but after the rocket punch, it's the tomahawk. You got the Gedder has got the tomahawk, Gomaz has got the tomahawk, Mazinga gets the iron cutter, which is like tomahawk arms. Incredible. There's the Tom Heiser. Did zero damage. Yeah, so loads of my weapons, but in the end, hitting something very hard with a sharp thing just so Like, you gotta remember that that axe is like 10 meters tall. So it's really big and really fucking heavy. Axes are just swords that are easier to use when you think about it. 